Yeah. Whenever I skip rope, I can't use these wireless headphones. They fall right out of my ears. So, of course, it would be helpful if I could get the rope itself not to fall out of my hands. Finish my protein shake, and then we'll hit this. New name, who this? Yes, sir. For those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Bull Muscle. For those of you who know me as Beer Battered Ag, yes, I'm going through a rebrand. This seems like a pretty good time to talk about that, so let's go ahead and talk about it. I am a diehard Aggie. The eyes of Texas are upon you. That is the song they sing so well. Sounds like hell! So goodbye to Texas University. We're gonna beat you all to chigger the rim, chigger the rim, rock tough, real stuff, Texas A&M. Goodbye. We get a little bit more all. So why can't I click all? Oh, yeah, there it goes. Nice. All right, let's do one more bronze bar. If you adopt the mindset, and this is a quote from Jacob Fisker of Early Retirement Extreme, if you know that guy, 10 points to you. But it's a, it's, it's a quote that I find unbelievably uh, poignant in today's era. Spending money represents a failure to solve one's problems by smarter means. I'm gonna repeat that. Spending money represents a failure to solve one's problems by smarter means. That's painful. But yes, my friends, pure protein, as theirs makes no difference from raw egg whites. It's disgusting, um, the taste is vile, and it smells, but 100 yeah, my poor roommate has to deal with the farts that come from this, and as you might imagine, they're not ple they're not pleasant. But let me all right, let me go ahead and walk, knock this bad boy down. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. We have another episode of Bulk Cycle today. It is actually somewhat chilly in here, so as you can tell, I am currently in sweatshirt, sweatpants, trying to bulk up a bit, or. Uh, Warm up a bit, excuse me. Strong like bull. Oh, hey, Nick, thank you very much for the watch stream. I appreciate that. Um, you may tell the light is a little bit different in here. It's a little bit darker. Uh, the reason's because something's going on with the overhead light and I can't seem to figure it out right now. So I decided to just keep them off instead of risking it shorting and causing a fire. So, all right. I'm going to start with... Uh, I'm going to start with a little bit of jump rope, really warm up, it is, as I said, really chilly today. There we go, let's actually find out. It says it's 62 in here, I know it isn't. Um, I'm not sure what it is, but that, that ain't right. I know that much. Okay. Where are we? Start here. Hit anything. There we go. So, 
This is one of the issues with super squats is, you know, the book says to do it three times a week. Uh, my experience, what I've found is that uh, definitely if you do it three times a week at the intensity level that is suggested, you'll be very, very sore. Uh, there's a video on YouTube where Alexander Bromley is a, I don't know if he's a pro or not, but he's uh, very, very knowledgeable in this field. Discusses, you know, a lot of people like to complain about being, you know, overtrained or something like that. And the real answer is uh, they just don't. They they have they don't. He says, uh, you know, you do a program like super squats, you're gonna find out what overtrained really means. Uh, that that was more or less his premise. That is true. Sorry about that, I'm still setting up. So what did my, I warmed up the power for me this year. Was it at 95? That's what I thought. Cool. <sighs> Morning YS Atlas. Thanks again for the watch streak there, Nick. Good to, good to see y'all. Good morning. Clips on. Alright, that one is. So, this is up. Over press. We are seated behind the neck. Figured out yesterday the right way to do this. Put it about here, get underneath it, set the little sark. I, I promise I will get a shirt at some point. I'm just trying to warm up first. So it's still a little bit cold. A bit of a sore throat from waking up this morning. This is somewhat concerning. Hopefully, I didn't have to pick up something. That would be not ideal. Morning, Phoenix Phoenix. How you doing? I, for one, am very sore. But we are carrying on regardless. What you gotta do today? Um, I'm of the mindset that I'm gonna get this. I mean, y'all saw me hit 305. The difference between yesterday and today, so I'm gonna go down to 275, but I'm gonna try something slightly different. I'm gonna go really do it by the book. Uh, three breaths per rep. Uh, go down, up, breathe, 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 and then so on for all reps. Now, if I get to 20 and I feel like I can do more, I'm gonna. You know, maybe that's 23, 24. That would be amazing. Um, the other thing I'm gonna try and do is keep my back a lot more vertical. 
by putting a small wedge underneath my heels, I should be able to do that. Still adjusting my move. How are you besides cold? Well, that's good, man. Oh, it's it's gonna take things like that are always gonna take time. There we go. No, because I'm going behind the neck. I need, yeah, I need to be facing this way. All right, so I'm doing behind the neck presses. Start, and I need some music for this. So not used to seeing little scorpions in my house. Yeah, yeah, if you've moved to the desert, that's what you're gonna see. It's hard to tell in the light, but uh, I did actually spray off all my mats. They're a lot cleaner than they were. It's not perfect, but it's much better. Ah, oh, come on, why aren't you connected up? Uh, come on. There we go. Perfect. All right. Behind the neck press. Lightweight, oh yeah, this isn't too bad. One layer off, one more to go. a little bit more time in between sets. I don't think I rested enough time. So we're gonna hit one more set of shoulders. Uh, I think we're gonna stick to 240 on bench. That's what we did last time. I only hit a set of, I think it was eight and seven and six, which is Nowhere near the 12 the book recommends. Um, the book recommends, you know, get to a certain weight, try to hit three sets of 12. So um, I may go down to maybe 235, see if that helps. So 
Yeah, we'll do bench after this. Howdy, welcome to the stream. Welcome to the bullpen, CDN student. How are you doing? But you don't wanna know. <sighs> All right, third set of shoulders. Let's go, let's hit these delts. Hear that. Oh, Ooh. my spine is crunchy this morning. Look at that cold air is blowing in. It is not warm out, but that cold air is going to be really helpful when we're hitting them squat sets. All right. Last set on behind the neck press. Try for at least eight here. That's nine, that's pretty good. Let's go, let's do this. Back implodes the moment from bending, so I felt that. Yeah. Um, super squats will work your lower back. Uh, the squat set, you know, that much time under tension with squats will inevitably put some sort of working load on your lower back. Beyond that, they're instructed to do stiff leg -like deadlifts or Romanian deadlifts if you wish to substitute uh, after the fact. And, uh, oh mama, that'll hit you. That'll hit your back real good. And it's necessary, to be honest. It's necessary. Uh, because it's just, you know, that kind of work, you know, that kind of load put on your, your body is just, uh, more words are failing me today. To be fair, the blood ain't going to my head. I wasn't going to the rest of my body today. Hey, Steve 80, thank you very much for the gift bomb. That's very kind of you. Like day four of starting fitness, going from morbidly obese to healthy, so it'll be a long journey. Well, I am so absolutely thrilled that you stopped in to say hello, if that's the case. There's nothing that makes me happier uh, than seeing people start their journey to make themselves better. Um, and yes, that's what you're doing. You are, you are embarking on a journey of self-improvement. Good for you, man, uh, or, or woman. Uh, stick around. I hope uh, if, you, if you want my advice, by all means, ask whatever you'd like to ask. Uh, you can do it. The power, this is why I love the gym, especially weightlifting. There's only one determinant. You've got four working limbs. The only determinant to how good you can get is how hard you work. CD, uh, thank you very much for the follow. I appreciate that. Now you're officially part of the bullpen. All right. 
let's hit this. Um, so this, I tried 240 yesterday, um, or not yesterday, two days ago. Only got eight. Um, so I'm not really happy with that. It's obviously a decline in strength from uh, the last time I was doing super squats at peak bulk back in February of this year. So I'm gonna try 235, get a little closer to 12. Let's do this. Thanks. Wake get the fuck up, man. That's not good. I should be doing better than that. That's not good. Yeah, I should not be having this much trouble on only 235. That's a problem. Like the vibe seems positive. Oh yeah. No, you gotta stay optimistic. That's a big part of it. I'm moving you guys a bit closer for bench. No, that's, I'm a huge believer in, you know, be the best version of yourself that you can be. Only person you're competing against is you. You're not, I mean, obviously, right? None of us in here are professional power lifters or bodybuilders or weightlifters or anything else. We're in here because we're doing this for our own improvement or for our own mental health or some other reason. Um, in general, I find reasons around the self are the best ones. Uh, you can try to lift to get the girls as many men do. Uh, but I find that people who only come to the gym uh, with the goal of trying to attract women uh, tend to fail at doing both. They neither get strong nor do they get the girl. Slightly imbalanced on that left side was higher. Hey, Molly, good to see you. We're by three inches. I'm going to balance two on my sets, just don't hurt yourself, but yeah. Um, well, okay, so your, your left side, right, what's on your screen, your left side is my right side, unless you've adjusted for that, but um, yeah, no, I'm right hand dominant, so it doesn't surprise me. Uh, it's frustrating, but it is what it is. So. We got two sets of bench, two sets of bent over row, two sets of curls, and we got the big kahuna. Yeah, I need something a little bit stronger. I need something a little heavier. Let's go to Led Zeppelin. 1968, first album. Uh, babe, I'm gonna leave you. Yeah. Now, uh, mullet, are you the same mullet man that's on the tree cord? If you are, um, I'm thrilled to have you in here, uh, cause very seldom do people from that server actually show uh, up on this, on this channel. If you're a different mullet man, well, cool. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Um, cause I've seen you poke your head into the fitness channel. You're one of like, maybe five people that ever posts in there. So it makes me happy to see uh, that core of people in here. Um, it's not common. So if you've ever heard of this, that's what we're doing today. Okay. Let's do this. 
set two. I need to get at least fucking eight here. I need to get the fuck together. Man, my bet just slid. It has fallen a long way. My all-time PR is 355. There's no way I'm even getting close to that right now. Maybe 330. Maybe. Fire off. Strong like ball. Triceps just aren't there in the way that they need to be. The chest is strong. I could do that for probably 255, 260 to the sticking point. But my tries just aren't as strong as they need to be. I may adjust. Uh, now, okay, so this is something I want to talk about. With super squats, I strongly recommend, if you ever wish to do this program, first off, this works. Second off, this is the hardest workout program I have ever done, and it's not even close. Uh, you can go online and look at reviews of this program. Everyone who has done it, and done it properly, will tell you, it is really fucking hard. Um, just, ugh. I've done this for six weeks. I'm not ever doing it for six weeks again. I'm gonna do this for three weeks this time and that's gonna be more than enough. Um, maybe four, given that I'm doing only two days a week of this instead of three. I'll explain why. Uh, so, you have to take at least one day of rest in between uh, these workouts. If you attempt to do a super squats workout on Friday and hit it, the same stuff, but five pounds more on Saturday, you are not going to make it. You, you will hurt yourself. Uh, you have to take more rest. Frankly, a lot of times the book says if you can't do three times a week, do this, but do it two times a week. What I'm going to do, uh, because I've done this already, I feel as though I've earned the right to experiment a bit with it. So, what does that mean? What it means is that for the next few weeks, I think I'm going to do it for four weeks, hit the super squats workout Friday, Sunday, obviously today's Saturday, I know, I did it on Thursday to start with the game, just one extra day of recovery because you're going to fucking want them, uh, uh, excuse me, but uh, on Tuesdays then, I would have the opportunity to, you know, hit another workout because two Two workouts a week, yes, these are extremely hard, so you will build muscle, but you know, that's putting four days of rest in between and only one day of rest in between the other two, so that's unbalanced. Uh, and if you're supposed to be doing three anyway, you know, you should be doing something else. So what I will be doing on Tuesdays, since I'm at the site gym where they do not have a squat rack, uh, I will be doing sort of a, an auxiliaries uh, bodybuilder style workout, a lot of low weight, high rep exercises. Really build hypertrophy and put volume on the muscles that aren't getting worked as hard. So super squats workout, right? The whole workout, it's only about 18 reps and it's full body, or sorry, 18 sets. And that's really pushing it. You know, that's throwing in three sets of calf raises and counting rater pulls and pullovers. Um, when you get down to like core workout sets, it's maybe only 12 per workout. You're only doing that three times a week and that's for full body. So it's, it's very low volume. Uh, 
And that there's nothing wrong with that approach because if you're jacking the intensity up to the level you should be doing on this workout, you're not gonna need any more volume. However, because I can't do that third workout unless I come home and I do it at the end of the day, and I know from the last time I did it that consistently, my Tuesday evening workouts would always be where I would fail or I would be lower strength because I'm just, it's later in the day, I'm more tired, uh, and I don't quite have that same smash. Um, also, you know, if it's that late in the evening, I'm not taking caffeine, uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not really ready to go, not really hyped up. So because of that, I decided, okay, I'm gonna do this twice a week, maybe extend it instead of the three week half workout, I'm gonna move to four weeks, so I still get eight total super squats workout, which to me is as near as makes a difference. Half, because uh, you're supposed to do this three times a week, 18, or for six weeks, that's 18 total workouts. If you do that properly, and you succeed on every single one, you're going to add 90 pounds to your 20 rep squat, which is an absurd number, but people do it. I think when I did it, I ended up adding, I wanna say 60, is that, yeah, no, uh, no, 55, because I ended up, I started at 265, I got all the way to 320, I tried 325, but I failed on rep 17. Um, you're not supposed to fail. Sometimes it will happen. Uh, you know, the goal is to grit it out if you really want it. The, the key is, if you're failing at the bottom, it means you should have you know, taken more deep breaths in between sets, but under no circumstances are you allowed to re-rack it before 20. Um, so yeah. Morning understanding one, good to, good to have you in here. But uh, yeah, so that's, that's more or less the gist of this. Uh, it's, I'm gonna do sort of adding more volume, a little bit more uh, of the, the muscles that aren't getting worked as much. So like, uh, you know, this workout, what you're doing, you do uh, behind the neck press, you've already seen me do that, bench press, currently doing that, bent over rows, curls, uh, the big squat set, and then, uh, Stiff-legged or Romanian deadlifts. The book says stiff-legged. I did stiff-legged yesterday. Frankly, I like Romanian a bit more. I feel like uh, it's a lot more controlled and it works the hamstrings a little bit better. Uh, they serve the same purpose. I just prefer Romanians and uh, most people who have run the program say that's okay. Uh, so I, I, I prefer Romanians to stiff leg. It's also a body physiology thing. How long are your legs? How long are your arms? Um, to me, Romanians just feel a bit safer, uh, and they, I, I just, I feel, I, it, they hurt more. Like they, I feel like I'm getting a better workout with Romanians than stiff legs, because it's, it's that eccentric motion. Anyway, um, right, so that, you know, you can see there's some obvious, you know, muscle groups that aren't getting worked quite as much. You know, triceps, you're hitting them as an auxiliary with the behind the neck press and the bench but you're not, you're not doing anything with triceps as the primary motivator. So I'd probably throw in some dips, um, not really hitting traps very much. So, you know, I'll probably hit shrugs, uh, maybe some vertical pulls or flies, uh, or front raises, if you call them that, um, for front delts, maybe some, you know, maybe a set of chest flies here or there, uh, probably a couple other back exercises, maybe some pull-ups. Uh, I think pull-ups are a really good exercise to always be doing. Um, yeah, so you, you, you get the idea. Anyway, uh, let's hit the next set. Switch to Van Halen now. Get up there.
Not good. Um, I think I'm going to stick to C35 for the time being. Really trying out the reps. Next up is rows. Uh, we did 155 last time. We're going to stick to that. We're going to need this soon enough anyway. Move it over here. Two sets, curls for two sets, then we're probably going to hit the big tuna. Um, for today, I'm going to try it a little differently. I already just talked about that. Y'all see what I mean when I set it up. Give me just one second. This, this workout program is just not very fun. Uh, it's honestly, oh, we got a new follow. Thank you very much, uh, Conrad721. Uh, I'm not trying to be a drag or anything, but it's just, this is like the worst part of it. Honestly, I don't know which is worse. Uh, the actual two minute squat set, three minute squat set, depending on how slow you go. Um, or the dread and anxiety that occurs before it. Like right now, I feel nauseous. I, I like I'm not enjoying myself right now. But you know, it does become a question: of How bad do you fucking want the gains? You know, you gotta you gotta push through. All right, bent over rows. For these, I am using the belt just because I prefer it. Yeah, I'm a lot weaker now than when I did this in February. Oh. Yeah, yeah. The nausea, the anxiety. Oh, it's fucking bad. You still gotta fucking do it, you know? No excuses, but. Oh. Push mobile even on this tablet is awful. Get off my butt and move my computer. Do it, fam. Get up and go. Only person stopping you from doing that is you.
curiosity, I'm going to measure something real quick. Do this, the two sets of curls, and then God help me, I'm doing the big one. <sighs> All right. Yeah, I hit this for. Instead of, oh, we got a hydrant really going to make me do an ab set now. I'll redeem that later. I will do it, but no, we're not doing that now. 6.45 a.m. Oh, you're out on the West Coast. I get you. Feels like October. Thank you very much for the follow. Welcome to the bullpen. Hydrant, you'll, you'll get your ab set. Please remind me later, but I'm not, I'm not stopping what I'm currently doing to do that. That would be unsafe. Need to preserve my core for the squat set. All right. Worst case, if I forget, just remind me and I'll refund you the points. Focus. Strong like bull, come on. Come on, lock in, lock in. Thirteen. Good mood. Disappointed by RGB stuff turning on. Ah, I get you. Uh. This is all we're going to use the belt for today. I am going to attempt to do this set by the book. That means doing it beltless. It's already 10 here. Uh, my current residing state of South Carolina. Okay. 
It's in the Discord. Hey, all right. No, dude, I'm not even 5% body fat. Um, I weighed in this morning, it said 16.7. I think that's a touch high, I'd guess. I'd say I have some visible abs, but not a six pack. I'd call that about 15%. You could say it's a little more, you could say it's a little less. It really kind of depends. I'm on a bulk anyway right now, so we're not worried that much about aesthetic. We're worried about packing on muscle. We'll go back to the cut in a few months. Guess we're at the Century Mark versus Marshall last night. Hey, that's great, bro. All right. Bicep curls. So now, I'm going to try and adjust the heels for a little bit better balance, <clears throat> keeping the squat bar a little bit more, or my back a little bit more vertical, eliminate some forward leaning. So to do that, you have to space correctly. You need to figure that out now. Split of a touch. Actually, these, <laughs> these need to be in. What am I doing? Doing this without spotters, that's unsafe. Without spotters with uh, safeties. Yeah, yeah, I don't think that was the right call. I feel like being on the right spot. Yeah, it's a lot more vertical. That's good, that's what we want. I like that. Lucifer, welcome on in. Thank you very much for the first time chat. Welcome to the bullpen. You too, Shenze. Uh, Beau Fessier, that sounds French. I'm not French. Welcome though, welcome. All right. Yeah, from France. Well, all right, vive la France. Hey, I fucks with the French. Y'all got nuclear energy. Uh, this is where I'm from. In case that wasn't really obvious by my accent. All right, Ivan. All right, we got one more set of biceps. We got the big kahuna. Alright, 
that's eight. All right. So now we get to the the reason super squats is so difficult. That horrendous, painful twenty rep squats that. Mm. I was just setting in, but I'm gonna do it. I should be able to achieve depth at less of a forward lean than normal because I can be as flat footed. It's only these 10 pound bumper plates I've got sitting on the floor may not look like much. It gives my heels uh, maybe a little more than a centimeter uh, and it helps a lot. This is a little bit less weight than last time, which I know those super squats, if you do it right, you're supposed to add five pounds. But I'm doing this battle belt. This is the first time I'm doing it with something under my heels. So for safety reasons, I think I should try it a little bit less. I'm also going to be taking three breaths in between each set or each rep. Really trying to work on the pause. My goal is to be under this for, you know, two and a half minutes would be great. Um, we'll see if it happens or not. You ahead now? Just run in a quick hour. Oh, uh, all right. You need anything from Dollar Bill? No. Okay. Um, you can use my car if you want to preserve electricity on yours. I don't care. You sure? Yeah. All right. Except for a and m basketball, Iowa State third ESPN in events invitational. Yeah, I like was hoping it works out well. Okay, so to recap, 275 pounds, that's about 115, 120 kilos, somewhere around there. Um, I'm going to take a quick break and use the bathroom uh, because feel something happening down here and mixing that with a 20 rep squat set is uh that's a recipe for disaster so i'm gonna do that i'll be back in a couple of minutes i'm gonna lock in we're gonna hit this okay so stand by y'all
How bad do you fucking want it? My weight, strong like ball. Shit! I lost my balance. What the fuck? Let's go. I think I switched to high bar. I didn't read. Put it in the low bar. I'm disappointed in myself there. I completely fucked that up. All right. All right. Um. That was maybe about 80 seconds in. I had more in me, but I lost my balance. I could feel the weight shift forward. I'm like, I got scared. Um, I can feel my lower back just decide. I feel like if I was going to try and complete that, I was going to round my back. And that, that is a one way ticket to injury city. I'm not going to fucking do that. Um, I'm going to reevaluate re doing this beltless. 
I, just, I do not feel safe doing that. Maybe it's a psychological crush that I've built for myself, but I'm not happy with that at all. All right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna complete the set. I think I need more. I think I need more time to rest. I don't I don't think I'm physically capable of doing this the way I did last fall. Kind of makes me really sad. I'm not happy with that. I consider this a failed workout now. Um, yeah, I got trapped at the bottom of the hole. Oh, I'm not happy with that at all. Um, hmm. I still want to attempt to finish it. Give myself, let me give myself a second to regroup. This is only 215, so I should be able to. There we go. Okay. So to salvage this, I put 275 back on. Try and do eight more. It doesn't count. This this entire workout's a failure, but. I think I can salvage something, so I'm gonna do that. I put myself just under the wall for a minute. Just work on the breathing, work on feeling this beltless, work on overcoming that mental crutch. Just, that's what's happened here. This is not a failure of physical strength, this is a mental failure. Head just was not in the game where they needed to be. Wasn't taking it off time at the top. If I had failed at 17, at 18, that would have been one thing. The fact that I failed at 12 tells me something else is going on here and it's upstairs. Okay. Okay, so this is 275. And we're gonna try, we're gonna try that again. failed on that, but, uh, all right, I'm going to complete this set. I'm really not happy with myself there. Um, this is what I get for doing it beltless, but no, this was a mental failure. I, I deserve to suffer more, so I'm going to get back under here and finish. Come on. You got more in you.
That's so underwhelming mentally. That was a failure of a set. Not happy with that at all. Okay. Just keep pushing. Get that mental under control. Yeah. Thanks, Rio. Um, uh, I'll be honest. The whole premise behind these is that heavy breathing uh, is why you know you're gonna want. Oh my god. I can barely fucking stand. Okay, so at least I hit it pretty hard. Like my legs are definitely in a lot of pain. So that's good. Um, the whole idea behind not wearing a belt, the book talks about this. I'm gonna read it here. Because I mean, y'all saw me bang out 20. Um, it's not like I was doing that very quickly. Uh, so I was on about a two minute pace, maybe slightly more. Uh, you know, as I slow down. So, the, let me let me read from the book why I attempted this uh, without a belt. I personally, uh, after attempting it, I disagree with what the book says. Uh, then again, God, if anything was, if, if any any book knows what the what the right form is and why you can use a belt is here. <clears throat> Another hint for maximizing the results from these squats will sound like absolute heresy to contemporary powerlifters. Do not wear a lifting belt while doing these squats. A shocking idea, clearly, but my personal experience has demonstrated that wearing a lifting belt significantly inhibits your breathing, doesn't really make a noticeable difference in terms of avoiding back fatigue on these squats. <laughs> Having done this now, I beg to differ. I think, you know, as long as you don't, right, there's a difference between wearing no belt at all, wearing a belt so tight that you're really only using it for an anaerobic one rep max, and wearing it 
tight but not so tight to where you can still get plenty of oxygen in your system through expanding your chest, but simultaneously still retain some level of back stability from the belt. This is a, where, uh, he says, a shocking idea clearly, my personal experience has demonstrated that wearing a lifting belt significantly inhibits your breathing, doesn't really make a noticeable difference in terms of avoiding back fatigue on these squats. Although this approach seems oh, unorthodox today, a poll of some of the most experienced experts on the subject discovered that most of the men who pioneered this program never used lifting belts while squatting. Uh, Perry Rader and Douglas, 1988. So if your mind can handle it, your body will likely benefit to do these squats without wearing a lifting belt. So to me, what that sounds like is what, what I'm saying is I feel like I need a belt because uh, I feel like I'm sapping myself mentally. And I think he actually, now, now I read it again, is what he's saying is it means my mind is weak. I have to be honest, I think the book maybe is onto something. So perhaps I should stick with this. I'm gonna re, I'm gonna review my form uh, on the VOD. I wanna see if my back rounded at all on like, I only went to 12, but like the fact that I was able to re-rack it from basically ass to grass um, at 215 and then bang out eight more reps at 275 after taking like, what, maybe 90 seconds rest. What that tells me is that there was more leg strength here. There's a block up here I need to get through. Um, I think that means I get to psych myself up better. Probably means I need to rest a little bit more um, and eat a little bit better, which yesterday I had cake and sangria. That may have been uh, subpar, but no, I need, to, I need to fix this. So I personally feel as though is a much better option to use a belt. I feel like you can do a lot more weight with a belt, but now I'm kind of wondering, hmm, maybe there's a little bit of ego lifting going on there. I need to humble myself, stick to 275 for a while, beltless, uh, and bang out 20. I know I've got 20 in me. Uh, I just need to convince up here that I've got 20 in me. But it, I should not, right? The whole point of this is that when you hit that 20th rep, you shouldn't be able to, like, you should be, struggling just to barely move. I definitely don't feel like I, I got to that point. I have a lot more gas in the tank at 12. I, I feel like I've got the strength to hit 20. I just, I got scared. Um, that's what's gonna happen uh, sometimes. Uh, the, the mental aspect of super squats is 100%, uh, you know, very important to figure out. This is okay. You have to figure uh, out ways to deal with setbacks. Um, you know, I know the book says you will simply do 20. There is no failure. There's no option. Uh, but, okay, you know, no, this is perfect. Uh, so I'm going to have to figure out how to adjust to that. Um, definitely going to want to look at my back angle on the, uh, on the VOD. We're going to go from there. So the next thing I'm going to do is hit, uh, hit calves with some toe raises. The, better, the best thing about this is I can just, I'm going to do these calf raises really nice and slow. Um, and then and I'm going to really, I'm going to take my time uh, under the bar. And I'm just going to get used to doing lots of heavy breathing under there. I think that's what I'm going to do. I feel a lot more in my quads today than my glutes or my hamstrings. And so what that tells me is that uh, using those 10 pound barbell plates as a heel platform was a good idea. So you're trying to go for pure strength on squats? No, uh, this is to build muscle. I mean, strength is going to come with that, but if I was going for pure strength on squats, I'd be training in the, you know, the probably three to six rep range. The fact that I'm going for 20 rep squats, uh, it's kind of different. I mean, you could still build a shit ton of strength doing this way. I mean, so it, kind of, I guess strength is one of the things I'm building. 
Pure volume and muscle mass is also what I'm looking for. I want my legs to get bigger, I want my body to get bigger. That's what the 20 rep squat is supposed to do. So that's the belt list of the platform wedge of 0.75 inches. I'm gonna say failed at bottom mental break. Yeah, I've definitely got more strength than 12. Because I, I hit 20. Uh, on Thursday, I hit 20 on Thursday at 305. I clearly have the strength to do this, um, but it's, it's getting used to doing with our belt, you know, going with that three breath kind of deal. All right. That said, um, I do feel like the pace is pretty good. Um, that's, that's what I want to see. I want, I want a full 20 reps uh, set to be well above two minutes. I'd like to be pushing three minutes. That, that would be ideal, but I've got a lot more to work on uh, to get to that point. So we're going to do a set of calves next. Um, you know, live and learn. Salvage what I can out of this workout. We'll go from there. Keep it up. <sighs> uh, yeah, I did that. That was all sorts of fucky. Um, for calf raises. Just because I'm trying to get used to squats on a wedge platform doesn't mean I should be doing that on calf raises. That wasn't a good idea. Okay, that's a good thing to learn. Oh my god. Right, we're going to do a set of Raiders. So these are Raider poles. The idea here is you're grabbing an object about at head height, pulling it down and expanding your rib cage.
Share, thank you very much for the five bits. Thank you for the hydrate. I, yeah, I need a drink. Oh, so. This is very interesting though. Uh, I, I'm in pretty dire pain right now, even though I did not even get anywhere close to finishing the 20 rep. The fact that again, the, the fact that I was able to bang out eight more that quickly after doing 12 uh, is proof uh, that I had the strength to carry on, but it was a mental block for those of you who just came in. But what's interesting now is where I'm feeling the pain. Uh, both days, so yesterday, the difference is today uh, versus yesterday, so, or not yesterday, Thursday. Thursday was flat-footed, low bar squat with a bell. I also went bang, bang, bang. I tried to bang them out uh, pretty rapid succession, kind of one breath squats to about nine, and I slowed down. I averaged uh, north of, I, I went for north of two minutes on Thursday. This, today, I failed at 12 because of a mental block. Um, I was at about 80 seconds, but I was doing three breaths per, which is an interesting difference. What I found though is again, where it hurts. Uh, lower back is pretty sore on both of those, just to be expected really. Um, especially beltless, you're going to be putting strain on your lower back with any squats. Uh, you know, you can, you can keep your form as good as you want it you're still going to be engaging those muscles. Same thing with your core. My core is pretty, pretty sore. Mm. My core is pretty sore. But the difference I'm feeling is uh, on Thursday, my glutes and my hamstrings were on fire. Obvi by far and away the most painful things after that squat set. Today, I can feel a lot more on my quads, which I suppose makes sense, right? Putting it on a platform is going to put my heel's up a little bit, which is going to allow for more quad drive, which is kind of, I think, what I need to be doing. Um, my glutes are in pretty good shape, is what I can tell, uh, and I think, I think this is a really good way for me to build those quad muscles a little bit. So I, I think um, now that I've come down a little bit, I'm gonna reattempt this uh, next Friday, same weight, uh, same philosophy, no belt, uh, and I'm going to do a whole hell of a lot better than 12. I know that. I know that. Um, so, Kansas, good to see you as always. Uh, aloha. Uh, good morning. It is early where you're at. Um, oh, my goodness. Ow. Let's do calves. Um, again, I'm going to try and uh, I'm going to try and spend more time under the bar. The goal here is ooh, that's actually a really good song. I'm going to do Ring of Fire by Social Distortion. That's uh, kind of a really good choice for this. Definitely a lot of burning. Oh my quads. That's good. All right. Let's do this. Uh, I'll face you guys this time. Got about 55 in here.
was the two minute set, and I'm very busy now. Yeah. I'm gonna throw on more weight. I wanna get used to the heavy weight on my shoulders. That's a really, actually, you know what? purpose of just getting used to heavier weight on my shoulders. Getting used to that force, you know, trying to crush me. The more time I put myself under that bar, the better off I'm going to be. The first, oh! There we go. More buzz the razor. Oh my god, mom, no. My mom's sending me something that we're going to try and offer Kirby Smart, our, our physician. That's not happening, that's just silly. I love my mom. I love my mom, but don't believe what you see on Facebook, kids. Andre, good to see you. Alright. I don't I try not to answer my phone during workouts, but my mom sends me a text. There's a big difference. Um, fuck. My legs are killing me right now. Um, that's why I'm putting that much weight under the Squat bar, though the whole the whole idea here is for me to uh, get used to that kind of weight, that kind of force, just crushing me. Basically, the idea is you put that much weight on your shoulders, even if you're just standing there underneath it. Every second you stand underneath it with this kind of weight forcing you down is going to build that kind of strength. It's going to send hormones into your body telling you. You gotta get stronger now or you're gonna get fucking crushed. You're gonna die. Uh, that's the, the basic premise. It does work. Jesus Christ, is it painful. This is, I mean, super squats shouldn't, that's not even the right term for this, honestly. Just call it fucking agony and be done. All right. Um, oh. 
I'm feeling major fatigue from my workouts for many days, like struggling even thinking straight. So that's interesting, Notorious Gamer. Usually I find that I'm a lot sharper mentally after my workouts, no matter how taxing they are. That's very strange. Um, how is your sleep and how is your diet? I would look at those two components first before analyzing whether or not you want to change something in your workout. All right. Oh, perfect. That'll do. Um, yeah. High protein, but very low calories. Are you on a cut cycle? I guarantee you that's where your mental fatigue is coming from. Uh, what are your, what are your actual macro targets? Sleep is good, but you never know a stress. Yeah, that's true. But like, you know, there's a big difference between if you're getting eight hours of sleep a night and six hours of sleep a night, if you're only getting six hours of sleep a night. You're damaging your own cause. Um, even if you, you know, you have a, a less restful eight hours, it's more likely that you're going to get more high quality sleep. If you get more sleep. It's, you know, I don't have any of those fancy high pollutant sleep trackers, so I don't know. I can only use raw numbers, but it stands to reason that the longer you sleep, the more likely it is you get good sleep. 2,000 calories of one hour weights and one hour cardio. Oof, that is a big deficit. Why are you, why are you going that, how, how big are you? Like, what's your, what's your goal? Because it sounds to me like you might be running too steep, too aggressive of a deficit, and uh, you might be overtraining a bit. If you're doing both weights and cardio, first off, do not do cardio directly after weights, especially if it's leg day. Uh, give your body a little time to recover just because right after weights, you know, you want to get protein into your system. So the protein can help rebuild your muscles. I would say maybe unless you're like, you know, morbidly obese and you're really trying to, you know, cut down on fat, like trying to rapidly lose fat, even then I'd say do it a little bit more slowly. You're putting in an hour of weights and an hour of cardio, even if you're pretty small, you're gonna be burning way more than 2000 calories a day. So it sounds to me like you're running too steep, too aggressive a calorie deficit. You're six foot, 170, you have muscle that you wanna see a six pack and bulk up. Okay, um, so yeah, okay. So 2000 calories is probably, right. If you were doing nothing, like you could set a cut cycle target around 17, 1800 calories and get away with it. The fact that like you're doing an hour of cardio an hour of decent cardio is five to 600 calories minimum. Even at, you know, you're fairly skinny if you're six foot and 170. Uh, so it sounds to me like you're probably burning close to 3000 a day. Uh, and if you're, if you're already six foot and 170 and you're going for that six pack, you probably don't need to lose more than five to 10 pounds of body fat. Uh, I would frankly accept that it's going to take a little bit more time be a little bit less miserable and reduce your calorie deficit. Keep it, stay in a deficit, just make it a smaller deficit. That's my advice. Howdy FM, good to see you. Um, a notorious gamer. Like if you're doing, if you really are doing 2000 calories and you're tracking it accurately, you know, you're, you're writing down everything you eat and you're not cheating yourself on that, you're underfeeding your body. Um, how much protein are you uh, targeting per day? How many grams? Uh, if you should, if you're lifting that much, you should be targeting at least 150 grams of protein a day. Uh, I didn't know the low calories affect cognitive function so much. Well, it's not so much low calories as it is low carbs. Uh, a lot of people experience what's called the keto flu uh, when people go on ketogenic diets. 120 grams of protein, that's fairly high protein, but it's not that high. I would say um, weights before cardio, the fitness version of beer before liquor. No, um, I just, in particular, I don't believe in doing cardio and weights uh, aggressively on the same day. Master 720, welcome on in, thanks for the follow, welcome to the bullpen. Uh, the reason I'm saying that is, I think you should do cardio on your rest days in, in particular. Uh, now, if you're going like for a long run, maybe don't go for that long run the day before leg day. That, that's probably a bad idea because you're gonna have lactic acid, you're gonna be sore as shit. But like if you're, you know, if you have a leg day, then a rest day, and then a push day or an upper body day, yeah, that rest day, you go for a bike ride or for a run or for uh, a walk. But to me, unless you're like training for a sport or, you know, a marathon or something, uh, I, I, I don't see the benefit in doing a lot of heavy cardio on the same day that you're lifting. I'll put it this way. If you feel the need to do cardio on the same day that you're lifting, 
probably best to do one in the morning and one in the evening. Doesn't matter which one is which, you can pick whichever one you like, uh, but that's just a lot of taxing on your central nervous system to do both in the same, in the same two, like in a back to back in a two hour period. Hi, d Duda. Um, what have you been up to? I've been on, I'm on a bulk cycle, super squats. Uh, it's fucking hard. Uh, I failed today uh, and it was a complete mental failure. I had the physical strength to do better than I did. I just, I, I failed, I fucked up. Uh, I'm gonna have to live with that and I'm gonna have to do better next time. This is simple as. That said, I've still got one more set of, oh, holy shit, uh, calves to do. And I have added more weight this time. So this is 325 pounds. Now, you might be wondering, okay, this is your last set of calves. Why are you doing more weighted calves? Honestly, when I'm doing calves here, it's not actually working my calves uh, with these toe raises is a completely secondary function. What do I mean by that? Well, the reason I'm doing, let me adjust this. The reason I'm doing uh, toe raises at this heavy weight is less about making my calves stronger and more about getting used to uh, keeping a very heavy weight on my shoulders and upper back for two, two and a half minutes at a time. That's going to help train me for the 20 rep squat sets where I'm going to be doing that. Uh, so that, that's the idea. Positivity is the way to go. Cardio morning and weights at night. Buzzing Ranger. Yeah, that's a good idea. But Notorious, like, dude, it sounds to me like you're doing almost too much. You're doing okay with 2,000 calories for a week or so, but after a week, it could just crash down like a car. Exactly. So what that means is you probably had a glycogen surplus, a little bit of extra fat, uh, and you've burned through that now, and your body's now saying, bro, you're, you're going too hard. Um, so you can either increase your calorie budget with some more, I would recommend some more carbs, especially before cardio. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be a ton, but like maybe throw in an extra banana or two. It's going to be a banana or a slice of toast or something. You know, it's going to be only 100, 200 calories. Not going to make a huge difference in your total uh, budget, but it's going to give you that energy boost to where your body isn't immediately already running on empty for your cardio. That sounds to me like you're overtraining. Just my opinion. All right. Let's do this. Oh. Strong like bull, come on.
Notorious Gamer, uh, 46, no, no, uh, Notorious Gamer is, uh, cutting. Uh, no. Nah. Oh, my God. Uh, no, I need to do the Raider Pulse. Fuck. Come on. Actually, Lab, I know you was asking about this. Let me zoom in a bit. All right, so the whole point of a Raider pull. Is to expand your chest. So you take about half height. If you can feel the pain in your sternum, you're doing it correctly. There we go. You do 10. Each grip. Hang on, that's ten. Do more music, come on. Oh my god, the, the pain in my rib cage. Oh, fist bump, here you go. 4.5 4 calories, one sitting clean food is impossible. Bullshit, it's not. Uh, notorious, I can promise you that. Drink milk and lots of it. But that's if you're bulking. Uh, it, to me, it sounds like you're cutting. So there is no need for you to be hitting that number of calories. If you're on a cut cycle, totally different. Now, I can eat 4,500 calories of clean food extremely easy, provided, of course, you consider milk, milk clean food, and I do. Milk is basically liquid Jesus, if you're bulking. Yeah, um, I did a, I wouldn't say a dirty bulk last time, but I definitely indulged in more shit than I normally would. To be fair, I always do my bulk cycles in December because... Look, you're going to be offered a bunch of cookies and shit every, every day, and nobody wants to see you be a Scrooge. So, you know, you've got a lot more margin for error when you're on a bulk. Cutting in December just fucking sucks. It's awful. You have to say no to so much more shit than you normally would. <sighs> oh my god, I'm in a lot of pain right now. But we're not done. Um, run Raiders, run Cavs. Uh, now really all we've got left is... Uh, stiff-legged deadlifts, which is what the book recommends. I'm going to do Romanians because I think uh, they work my hamstrings better. And I feel like the way I modified my squat today, I clobbered my calves, but I don't think I hit my hamstrings quite as hard. So this is the perfect way to fix that. All right. Um, question is, do I do it with or without a belt? I think with a belt because... 
It's a deadlift. Yeah, the Romanian is based on the eccentric and therefore has a lot lower weight. But it seems to me as though that would be a much more prudent thing to do. Oh! Dude, just <laughs> dude, that hurts. So, okay, we did some, we, we've learned a lot today. Uh, this was not a successful workout, but it was a valuable learning experience. And that's okay. That's the other thing, right? The only person you're competing against is yourself. You're gonna fail on things. And you gotta dealing, learning to deal with failure and learning to fail safely are extremely important. Right? On that 12th rep, or 13th rep, or whichever one it was, I don't I don't remember. Uh, where I failed on the super squat there, right? I clearly had enough gas in the tank. Why did I abandon it? Well, because I did something stupid mentally up here. I put the weight on upper body to try and give my quads, give myself uh, the better ability to breathe, give my upper back a little bit of a rest from keeping it on that shelf. When I did that, I didn't put it back in the lower back position. And so I tried doing, <laughs> you know, midway through a super squat set, I tried doing a high bar squat basically. Uh, I wasn't ready for this mechanically. And when I did it, uh, especially with that wedge underneath my toes, put a lot more emphasis on my knees, on my quads. I could feel the weight going forward, and I could feel like if I tried to send that, I was going to round my back, which is why I abandoned it. We didn't learn because I just got here. That's okay. I can explain it. I mean, I just kind of did. Does your body even absorb the 4,000 Ks, 4,500 calories? Oh, yeah. Right, okay. So you can tell, like, I have some... I would say I have some visible abs, but I do not have a six pack. I'm at about 15% body fat. My scale weighed in 16.7, you know, whatever. You know, I, I would say my scale, I've seen my scale say as high as 17 and as low as nine. I think 15 is probably about right. Uh, but what we learned today is I think I've got a mental block about doing these beltless, doing these for three rep breathing count that I need to work through. So I'm going to stay at 275 uh, and try and train my mechanics to do it better. So I've definitely got the strength to 20 rep that, but I have to build the mental toughness to do so. Making burgers tonight? Hell yeah. Uh, but yeah, Notorious, if you're bulking, you can... Okay, so it also depends on what your size is, right? So you got to remember, I'm at 210 pounds, uh, and a fair amount of that weight, I'm 6'3", a fair amount of that weight is going to be muscle. So, right... Even if I do nothing, my BMR is already over 2,000 calories. So if I eat below 2,000 calories in a day, I'm basically starving myself and I'm probably going to lose muscle. Uh, you know, you put in non-activity exercise thermogenesis and the thermic effect of food, which if you're eating even just a minimal amount of protein, will amount to a couple hundred calories. You add all that in, you know, I'm at a base level. If I do, even if like I'm being deliberately being lazy, I'm still going to burn probably 27, 2,800 calorie, calories a day, absolutely minimum. On days I lift, we're probably talking at least 3,300 calories, probably a bit more. So because of that, and I'm going to go ahead and get this down. This is also, by the way, um, notice this isn't just me being lazy and me not wanting to unrack. This is actually a really good way to practice failing. Put 200, you know, I'm, I'm going to do my Romanians next, but instead of just unracking and then re-racking when it's on the ground, I'm actually going to do this like it was a squat, get below my normal comfort point, and set it on the bar. This is a good way to learn how to fail. This is a safety precaution. Learning how to fail is a valuable thing. Very simple there. Now, because I'm doing Romanians, I'm going to keep the bar uh, up here to start with. I think that's probably wise. Uh, so the question is what I want to hit for Romanians. Um, I did single leg deadlifts last time at 215. To be honest, I felt like that was pretty easy. I felt like I was kind of loafing a bit. And to be fair, that was <laughs> after doing the 20 rep squat set, so it wasn't going to be high. Um, Costco Vids now live, thumbnails fire. Let's go. Bro, uh, lab. Put that shit in, uh, put the link in here. Um, I'm 
gonna make hamburgers this week. You can make hamburgers a fairly healthy meal. Uh, it just depends on how fatty the cut of beef it is you're using, uh, how many greens you put on your burger, uh, and what kind of bread, if any, are you using. If you do it uh, like a veggie wrap style, you know, you, if you wrap the burger and the contents in, you know, lettuce wrap, it's not that bad for you. Um, you know, and how much cheese you're using too. If you use ass tons of cheese, well, you're gonna add, increase the fat content. One slice of cheese is more than enough. Frankly, I've actually never been much of a cheeseburger person. Uh, I love cheese, don't get me wrong, but I feel like a hamburger, the patty is the star of the show, uh, and it should shine through. Okay, so, uh, what do I want to try here tonight, uh, or today? Um, I'm going to see what I did way back when in February on this. That's going to give me a better idea. I wrote, I did Romanians at, so that was 2.35, I would wait through the program. God damn, I did Romanians at 2.60 at one point? I did them at 2.70 at one point? I did them at 2.75 at one point. Holy shit. Um, okay, so I peaked at 2.75. Um, hmm. I think that means I could try 250 and get away with it, so I think that's what we're going to do. And if I don't, you know, if I don't hit 15, big deal, you know, I'll be alright. I'm not going to die, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to kill myself over it. I'm going to be okay. If I hit 12, I hit 12. I hit 13, I hit 13. I'm going to psych myself up because I want 15, but, you know, not the end of the world, but I'm dead. Okay, so this is 215, 245, 250. 215, 245, 250. All right. Remember burgers on Texas toast. Texas toast is very buttery and therefore very fatty. Be careful. Um, most, or at least most Texas toast is uh, usually toasted in some sort of fat, usually mayo, butter, or margarine, and that's straight fat. Um, my personal recommendation is, so if you're cutting, right, the way you should cut, get your calorie target on point, get your protein target on point, as long as you're getting some carbs and some fats, the ratio doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm personally not a fan of keto. Keto is not a bullshit diet. Uh, it does work if your calories and protein targets are accurate, but I don't like keto because it's expensive. That's the biggest, that's my biggest criticism of keto. And even the, the hardest core keto supporters will agree on that point. Keto, because it relies on a lot more meat consumption, a lot more fat consumption, is expensive. The cheapest things to buy in the store are things like beans, grains, rice, you know, carbs, potatoes, because you're doing, uh, you know, because you're doing, because you're doing keto, you're doing very little in the way of carbs. You know, what carbs you do have are probably going to be associated with the various meats you're eating. You got to be very careful with that. And that drives up the cost of your meals. Zaddy Zat, welcome to the, thanks for the first time chat. Welcome to the bullpen. I get lettuce wrap three by threes without fries or drink it in and out for cut cycle cheat meals. Honestly, that's pretty, that's, that's a really good cut cycle cheat meal because it still feels like a treat, but you've eliminated a lot of the excess fat. Well, yeah, the excess fat from the fries, the excess carbs from the fries, the drink, and the buns. That's, lab, that's, as always, you, you know what the fuck you're doing, you're smart. Okay, so I'm gonna sign myself up. This is the last set. Um, lab, do you have any questions about anything? I know you've been talking about maybe doing the super squats oh, routine. Uh, I don't know how much of this workout you've caught, but I can kind of run through it real quick. Uh, or for anybody else, uh, for that matters. Hey, thank you very much for the follow. Um, all right. Now I think I'm going to go, I'm going to abort T-cells, and I'm going to go a crazy world by the scorpions. Looking to super squats sounds horrific. Yes. It's extremely effective, but it is... 
I, I'm telling you, man, I have lifted weights for 15 years. Super squats is without question by far away the hardest workout program I have ever done, and it's not even close. The government just keeping me doing meathead bro lifts. Understandable. No. Um, I will say what you should do is biceps in the squat rack. I'm going to Mods, time this man out for five minutes. No, I'm fucking, no, I'm kidding. Don't do that because I actually do want to talk to you. Um, I feel like if you're, if you're legit curling in the squat rack, you get, I, I feel like, this is, this is my opinion. If, you, if I catch you curling in the squat rack, I want to give you a backhand, a backhand upside the head. That's all I'm saying. That's, just not, that's not just you, lad. That's anybody. Don't curl in the squat rack. The exception to this is if you have a home gym, in which case, do whatever the fuck you want. Imagine taking up the squat rack for just arms. Yeah, imagine. I'm looking at you, lad. Don't do that shit. I'd bop you over the head with a newspaper. That's like... That would be like taking the only punching bag. Like if you, that'd be like going to an MMA or a combat gym and taking like the only hanging punching bag uh, and doing nothing but like, like this to it. You know, it'd be like doing speed work, but it'd be like doing the speed bag work on a punching bag. Like, it, no, you don't fucking do that. My arms and my real legs, though. Are you sure? Because, like, I ain't ever been able to see you do this. Can you do this? It's like going on the pull-up rack to just hang. Ah, uh, that's actually not true. Um, there is a, a valuable point to dead arm hangs. Uh, dead arm hangs, especially if you're rehabbing an injury, uh, dead arm hangs can be really useful to kind of reset all the uh, joints and such in your shoulders and your upper back. So I actually, I'm, I'm okay with dead arm hangs. You know, obviously, if you're doing dead arm hangs and there are people trying to do pull-ups, fucking work in. Like, don't... But that, that's any that's any piece of gym equipment. You gotta have good etiquette. You gotta fucking chair. Never seen you do a backflip on flat ground, Mr. Leg Strength. <laughs> Alright, fair, fair, fair clap back. Fair clap back. Alright. Let's suck myself up. We're gonna do this. I know I'm loafing at this point, but that's kind of the fun of the stream. Alright, let me let me suck myself up. We're gonna do this. So uh, Romanian deadlifts, I need a belt. For those of you who don't know, uh, Romanian deadlift, the idea behind one, uh, one of those techniques pioneered in the Eastern Bloc. I have very little kind of things to say about communism, but damn it, they didn't know what they were doing in the gym. Uh, Romanian deadlift is the basic, I would call it the opposite of a deadlift. It's like uh, a pause squat or like a time under tension bench press. The idea is instead of focusing on the concentric bit, uh, you keep your legs very, only very slightly bent. It's, basically, it's the opposite of a stiff legged deadlift. You keep your legs slightly bent, you come down really until you don't bring the bar to the ground. You really only go down until you really feel that pull in your hamstrings and your glutes, and then you snap it back up using your hip hinge. All right, I'm gonna slide out. Redeem yourself. Come on, strong like pull. Come on.
10. Lost my grip. Damn, that was 14. Ah! No, not happy with that. Finish. Not happy with that at all. Uh. All right, stand by. I'm going to get. Some more water, protein. We're gonna do abs or talk QA. Uh, lab, if you want, I can run you through exactly what the book shows. I got it right here. You can even hear it. Take a clip. Uh, Bray A. Inns, thank you very much for the follow. There you go. Give me a sec. I'll be right back. I just finished, bro. <laughs> I'll be right back. I'm gonna do abs, but uh, I need to get water. All right, sorry about that, folks. Oh. So, what did we learn today? We learned, and the, the book teaches, the book talks about this. The book talks about really, uh, we are all a lot stronger than we think we are, myself included, yourself included. Uh, this routine, forces you to address the issues up here under the weight in the squat rack. There is no way around it. There is no, there's no, okay. The cool thing with super squats is that because it's such an old fashioned workout, right? The guys who crafted this 20 rep squats program were doing this before steroids were a thing. I'm talking the thirties, the forties, the fifties. Guys like JC Hyes, the guys like Perry Raver, the guys who really came before the dawn of the steroid era in the 70s. And even then, the guys doing this in the 70s and 80s did not have the knowledge of nutrition, 
and sleep. I mean, they knew that you know you had to eat big to get big, and they knew you had to sleep well to recover, but not in the same way that we understand it in 2023. We've got 50 years more knowledge to work with than the guys who pioneered this program. Yet, some of the guys who did this program were able to squat six, seven, 750 pounds with no, no performance enhancing drugs, none. So, you know, see me watching me sit here and fail at 275 when a couple days ago I succeeded at 305 tells me that I have unresolved issues up here I have to work through. And that's, that's what we learned today. It's never easy, never ever easy. But that's not the point. We don't do these things because they're easy. We do them because they're hard. We do them because we wish to improve. And that's, it's important sometimes to fail. You shouldn't try to fail, obviously. But, as I believe Henry Ford said this, I don't normally like Henry Ford very much, but success only teaches you one lesson. Failure teaches you thousands. So you have to learn from failing. And you can't be afraid of failing. Um, and I, I, let, I let fear creep into my head there uh, in, the, in the set. I had the strength to get 20 there. I just chose. Uh, I, I, I fucked up. So that's why I, you know, I went back. I had, the, I had the underlying leg strength to hit that for eight reps about a minute afterwards. Why? Well, because the failure wasn't, the failure wasn't down here. The failure was up here. It's annoying, it's frustrating, I'm pissed off at myself about it, but you know, what are you gonna do? Anywho, it is ab time now. Uh, Hydrant Campy redeemed an ab set. Uh, I'm gonna do my normal daily abs right now, and then uh, I'll do the extra 60 reps that Hydrant redeemed. So, if you guys have questions, this is also the Q&A section of the stream, so if you guys have questions, we can talk. I don't know how many people are even in chat anymore, for whatever reason, uh, Oh fuck, OBS and Stream Elements decided, hey, what if we just took that away? Um, and that's really annoying, but there's nothing I can do about that. <sighs> At least not to the extent of my knowledge. I might play around with OBS trying to figure out how to fix this. The first thing, I've seen people call these V-ups. I call them jackknives, because if you've ever seen how like, a pocket knife or a jackknife operates, that's kind of how this feels to me when I do them. 60 reps, I'm probably not doing all 60 in one go. If I'm fresh, I can do that, but I'm the furthest thing away from that. And if you don't feel your abs in pain after a squat set or a deadlift set, uh, work on that. <laughs> I can definitely feel my abs right now just from that Romanian set. Pissed off though, my grip strength is what failed me on the Romanian. I had 14 easy. I could have done that for a lot more weight. I think what I realized is it used to be that my quads were stronger than my glutes and my hamstrings. I think I've done low bar squat for long enough to where my glutes and hamstrings have caught up and passed my quads, uh, and I need to kind of rebalance. So, I'll figure it out. Anyway, I'm super glad we have people on the show, have people talking. Can you crunch? Can you stretch? Oh, um, I can stretch. I fucking hate it. I probably will, but I'm going to do my abs first.
Oh, that hurts. Yeah, I'll probably do a little stretching after. What up, Dodge? Hey. You heading out? Not just yet. I'm loading up the car first. So, let me give you a shout out here. Jesus Christ. Um. <sighs> My friend, the roommate. <sighs> you can come on over if you want to say hi. My friend and roommate, Dodger is on. It's going to tailgate and party in Colombia today. Uh, the Palmetto Bowl is today. It is the annual rivalry between Colombia and the Clemson Tigers. And uh, she's going to be doing free fortune telling and tarot card reading and all sorts of other fun stuff. And she's got a shot. So, you know, find her if you're in Colombia today. I'll put it that way. Um, she is the biggest Gamecocks fan uh, I know and is. Uh, Definitely, definitely committed. Definitely a diehard. So uh, stakes are pretty high for the Cox. If they win, they probably get a bowl. If they lose, eh, it's a lot less likely. Uh, it's possible, but unlikely is what I would call it. Um, but yeah, she often shows up in the background. I was on her stream yesterday helping decorate the Christmas tree, which in my opinion, still too early, but it was a good compromise given that, uh, so, She's one of these people that's like super into Christmas, and I get that, but I'm fucking not until December rolls around, really until Advent starts. But as a compromise, uh, she respects the sanctity of my second favorite holiday, that's Thanksgiving, uh, and then all the Christmas shenanigans can start after. So it's a good enough compromise for me. I also, he, apparently I made a bomb ass turkey too. Oh yeah, it was really good. No, the skin got all crispy, it was oven roasted, stuffing was delicious, um, sweet potatoes were good, Sekatash was good, now that is a name. Uh, thank you very much for the follow, Madame Chlamydia. Sounds like a dry queen name, honestly. I'm not even, I'm dead serious, that does sound like a dry queen name. No comment. Anyway, um, good luck. Drive safe. Thank you. <sighs> Madame Chlamydia replied with slay. Um, Hell so yeah. you, you might, you might have actually gotten that correctly. Uh, I, I'm going to say no comment to that one. I should become a drag queen. You rock it. You fucking rock it. Do it. No comment. <sighs> Anyway, I got four more sets of abs to do. No, five more, because Hydrant can't be redeemed an extra set. Um, I'm actually going to ping Hydrant. There we go. So supportive. Well, Dodger's more into that sort of stuff than I am. I'm not supportive. I, I'm a centrist. I just don't care. Um, if it's a social-related issue, it's not my problem. So, I don't know. You go exist, do whatever the fuck you want. So there you go. <laughs> Ain't gonna stick my nose in your business. That's not my problem. <clears throat> okay. Um, man, I'm gonna start de racking and doing more abs. I've got a set of raised leg sit ups to do, a set of bicycles to do. A set of Russian clips to do, a set of uh, knee crunches to do, and a set of, uh, uh, I forgot what the other one was. We'll figure it out as we go along. I'm sore though. Oh, well, welcome to the channel. Uh, my name's Bull Muscle. For, we had a lot of new followers today. That's been fun. Um, for those of you who are new followers, uh, I do weightlifting streams today, 
we've been working on super squats. I fucked up, failed today, but you know, it's gonna happen sometimes. Uh, I'm just doing abs now. This is kind of the, the Q&A cool down part of the workout. So if you've got questions, throw them at me. Otherwise, I'm gonna carry on. Uh. on there. It was just a singer in a rock and roll band. Actually a melancholy man sounds even better. Yeah, I actually I really dig the Moody Blues. They're one of my favorite bands. They're really up there. They're not top ten, but they're close. Alright. Try to keep the legs as straight as you can. Of course, my hamstrings are so shot at this point that even doing that is very difficult. This hurts my legs more than it hurts my abs. fucking dead right now. Central nervous system shot, core is shot, legs are shot, chest is shot, rib cage is shot, back is shot. It's no excuse, finish. Six more. Oh my. Forty. Fifty. Sixty. Oh. Do you have a punching bag with gloves so you can work out more? Sure do. It's right over there behind the camera. Um, there it is. It's right above the grill. I just moved the grill out of the way. And I do. Uh, it's a wall bag, so it's like uh, usually a lot of uppercuts. Uh, my homie Lab Boys gave that to me. And uh, he's premiering a new video where I eat a shit ton of stuff at Costco. So I highly recommend taking a look at that. Into the visit room, it reminds me of when happy toddlers. That's funny. Uh, those are bicycle setups, is the idea. Granted, I'm sure my form is shit right now just because I'm so exhausted. I have three sets left. Let's do a set of Russian twists. <clears throat> Four. 
Cool. Um, I got one more set of my daily abs to do, and then I'm gonna do the extra set that you requested. I didn't forget, but there was no way I was doing that before the squat set. My core is shot so bad right now. I'm gonna just take it off. Oh, my car. Beat the hell out of Clemson. Beat the hell out of LSU. Let's so, both beat the hell out of some Tigers today. What? I said, let's both beat the hell out of some Tigers today. Yeah, we're not gonna. We're in our second string head coach and our third string quarterback. That's not happening. Great things have happened. I, no, I don't have faith. I do. I've been burned too many times by my Aggies to be anything but pessimistic. I mean, I love Coach Elijah, and frankly, he's a lot less of an asshole than Jimbo Fisher ever was, but no. Nah. <laughs> Jalen Robinson and Elijah, I think Robinson's the last name, maybe I, no, it's Jalen Henderson, Elijah Robinson. Uh, you know, I mean, look, Jalen Henderson was a transfer from Fresno State, uh, who is a third string for a reason. Phoenix City streaming a pack bounce. All right, you got it. I'm gonna do V crunches. Get out of here. <laughs> See you in the morning. Yep. You can leave the garage gate up. It doesn't really matter to me. or Chilean chin-ups. Um, well, okay. This requires a little history lesson. Um, during the years of the Cold War, in many Olympic competitions, there were really two titans. The U.S. and the U.S.S.R. To a lesser extent, you had the Western Bloc, also known as NATO, and the Eastern Bloc, also known as the Warsaw Pact. Now there were some outliers to this, the Chinese, uh, the Yugoslavs, but in general, uh, you had the two major sides. In the United States, we were pioneers of a lot of stuff in the Iron Game, but uh, they were usually associated to the individual. Whereas, as befitting the more collectivist philosophy of Soviet-era communism, uh, achievements and new pioneering ideas in the Eastern Bloc were attributed to the country. Um, in general, this is why you have the idea of the Romanian deadlift, the Bulgarian split squat, or split deadlift, if you want to call it that. Uh, you know, the Russian twist. Uh, the kettlebell was uh, invented by the I don't know if it was the Russians or the Soviets, but it was one of those two. Might have been before uh, the fall of the Tsars. Uh, any, any Eastern Bloc historians, please correct me on that. But the point is that 
it speaks to a difference in philosophy between uh, the Eastern Bloc, which is very collectivist, you know, that's how communism worked, and the greatest country there ever has been. Fight me. Uh, as far as the other nations, the third, well, what was called in the Cold War, the third world, you have to remember that to have an Olympic level, you know, weightlifting team that can compete with, uh, you know, either the U.S. or the USSR would be required funds that most third world countries, even the Chinese, didn't have. Uh, really, until the 1980s, China was one of the poorest countries on earth because they embraced, well, they were under the iron fist of probably the most evil man to have ever existed, Mao Zedong. Uh, a lot of other countries were either fighting in proxy wars, as determined by the U.S. and the USSR's fighting, uh, or they just they simply did not have the money to pour into an Olympic level program, right? Because really, ultimately, the Olympics are, uh, in some sense, a nationalistic penis measuring contest. That's kind of the whole point. Uh, it's a point of national pride to win something in the Olympics. But I will give a lot of credit where it's due to the Eastern Bloc. I hate communism, as a good American should. Communism is a fundamentally un-American idea, but uh, the Eastern Bloc successfully did a lot of science and mathematics-based experimentation to come up with lifts that were very unique. A very good example of what I mean, here's the difference, right? In the Eastern Bloc, you know, you have Romanian deadlifts, Bulgarian Swiss squats, Russian twists, blah, blah, blah. In the U.S., you have the Jefferson deadlift, pioneered by an American. You have the Raider pull, pioneered by an American. It's not called the American pole. It's not called the California or the Texas pole. You do have the Texas method, which is a different story. But the, the point is, in general, it's, it speaks to the different cultures. In the US, we're highly individualistic. It's one of the things I really like about the United States. Uh, and it would track because I am an American and I'm very proud of where I'm from. So th there's, there's the answer to that. It's, you know, it's not a 100% thing, but speaking broadly, uh, it's about the cultural differences between the two. Uh, the cultural differences between an individualistic society and a collectivistic society. Me personally, I much prefer the individualistic society. Uh, I just, in general, I think Soviet communism was a fundamentally unsound idea. Just, it wasn't going to work. My ultimate proof, why the fuck, who the fuck put silly string on my, on my ceiling? Why is there silly? What the fuck? Y'all, there is silly string. There is silly string on my ceiling. Why is this here? I have to ask the roommate what she's been doing in here, man. That, why is there silly string on my ceiling? What the fuck? Um, see, I got one more set of abs to do. But that's a great question. Uh, but I, okay. It's important to state that, yeah, I may not necessarily be a fan of somebody who's backed up. Ha! Huh? I, I, I'm not necessarily a fan of Soviet-style Soviet central planning and of the communist mindset, but look, when someone, regardless of what ideology they have, comes up with an innovation that provides an improvement to the status quo on anything, it should be applauded. For instance, Sputnik. Sputnik was a game changer. Not only did Sputnik push the boundaries of what mankind could do, but it also spurred the United States on to, well, frankly, do better in the space race. Just as an example, I've been schooled on a Saturday. Well, it's, I don't know, it's, it's fun to talk about things like that, I think. All right, I'm going to do, I think, just one set of crunches for you here, Hyde, and that's, this is the bonus set that you requested. Oh.
Sexy. There we go. Redeem. It's fun. I appreciate the knowledge. Good. Give me one more second. I got to pee again. That's another thing I love about America. Property rights. It's my house, and I can pee where I feel like it. <laughs> I have much still to learn, much still to improve upon. I'm not happy with today's workout. Um, oh, I mentioned, I finally switched over to my new notebook. So it's leather bound, it's really nice. Dodger gave it to me as a gift last year and I finally got through my old composition book to the end and now I can use this one. It makes me very happy. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, I love, I love the words on it. it. has my old name, Beer Batter and Aggie Syndrome on it, but it says you can have results or excuses, not both. And today I certainly, well, I made excuses for myself up here, that's why I failed. So it's, it's correct. So we're in the cool down section. This is also Q&A. So if you guys want to ask me anything, anything at all, talk about the workout program, talk about financial independence, you name it, college football, diet, exercise, whatever, uh, speak your mind. This is your time to talk. Welcome on in uh, to those who are new. Thank you all very much. I had several people following today. That's been fun. Oh, me. I'm going to pull you guys in just a touch. This is nice. That's good. Okay. So, I'm going to just wanna undock the chat for just a moment. There it is. Why did that turn off? Save. Display viewer account. Thank you. Nice. What, what the hell? Why is it not showing? Stream settings. Display viewer account. Huh. I'll have to figure that out. Something's going on with uh, OBS to where it's not showing my viewer count. I'd really like to know that because it gives me an idea of, okay, are people just quiet, but there's a lot of people watching? Or is it, you know, is nobody here and I'm just talking to myself? It's kind of a big difference. So I guess I'll talk a little bit more about what I'm going to do. Um, I'm still kind of figuring out how I want to plan my workout tomorrow. Sorry. Hold on, I'm thinking. All right, cool. Good to see you, Psycon Bro. Hmm. I had a lot of nasal drainage, too. I, was a little, I had a little sore throat this morning, so hopefully that, you know, just happens to be a blip. Um, I don't otherwise feel under the weather, so I don't think it's anything too noteworthy. It might just be, you know, a spell of colder, drier air, uh, making me stuff up a bit, but probably will have a hot cup of tea tonight. Hopefully that helps. So, where does this leave us? Um, first off, I don't even fully have my pencil, which is, is it in here? It is. Awesome. Uh, I need to... They had you in the background while I pack silly string for a silly guy. Ha! Well, I didn't put it there. My roommate probably did. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna write down my protein. I had 380 calories, 64 grams of protein, 7 grams of fat, 17 grams of carbs. Uh, today I'm gonna really try and dial my diet in. My targets are 4,400 calories when I'm uh, 
on days I lift, 3,900 for days I'm not. And I'm really gonna kind of monitor my weight over the next coming weeks. And right, my target is about 235, 240 by the end of February. Uh, right now, I'm at about 210. So that's a lot of weight to gain in a few months. There's gonna be some fat gain, which is kind of how bulk cycles go. Uh, if I find that I'm gaining weight too quickly and too much of it is fat, I'm gonna dial it down to like maybe 4,000 when I'm lifting, 3,600 when I'm not. So that's a little bit more on that. As for uh, the regimen, so I'm, I'm modifying what's in the book. The book says do this workout three times a week and that's it. Well, the trouble is, so for me, that's gonna be Fridays and Sat Fridays and Sundays I'll be in here. Uh, today was Thursday and Saturday because, well, there you go. I probably should have taken today as a rest and then tried it tomorrow, but whatever, it's done now. Um, Tuesday, would be the other day I would probably try to do this. The trouble is that, uh, and I said this earlier, but it bears repeating, I'm at work on Tuesday, and I do have access to the site gym, but the site gym does not have a squat rack. And you can't really do super squats without a squat rack. So lighting looks good. Interesting. Um, it's funny you mention that because the lights are off right now because one of them's broken. Uh, so that's, it's, it's interesting you're saying the lighting looks good today when the lights aren't on. So maybe, maybe I need to keep them off. Thank you for saying so, uh, Capro. Anyway, uh, so Tuesday, what I'm going to try and do instead of, especially given that I failed today anyway, uh, I think the move for me is going to be instead of making, you know, it says if you can't do three days a week on these workouts, do two days a week and take more time to recover. What I'm going to do is something similar to that, uh, except for I'm gonna do, let's see what the temperature is in here. Yeah, it's in the 50s. Um, what I'm gonna do instead is, I'm gonna do all the auxiliary muscles that don't really get worked out on this. So that's gonna be, I'm gonna do some traps, probably some triceps, uh, probably maybe some leg curls. Uh, probably won't, maybe, maybe, if I do leg press, it's gonna be very lightweight, really more just range of motion type work. Uh, try and get that dorsal flexion a little bit. I think that's probably what I will do. Um, but it won't be at a very high weight. The, the whole point is to recover more. So that's probably what I'll do on Tuesday. Um, definitely we'll do more biceps because at present, right, so my cut cycles, I'm doing push, pull, leg, and I do, you know, like on biceps, I'll be doing 10 to 12 sets per workout. Uh, and if I'm doing that twice a week, right, you know, well, I do that twice a week, two weeks, once a week on the third week because it rotates push, pull, leg, push, pull, leg, push, pull, leg, with a rest in between each three. So, you know, it's five days a week, uh, more or less. But what that's going to mean is that, you know, that's going to be an average of 50 sets over three weeks or about 16, 17 sets a week. So to go from that to super squats, which is, you know, four to six sets a week, that's not enough uh, in terms of volume for my liking. And I'm not saying I'm smarter than the guys who wrote this book because I'm fucking not, but I've already done this for six weeks. I have checked that box. Uh, it's fucking excruciating. I'm only doing this for three to four weeks because I want to get better at the 20 rep squats and I really do want to pack on muscle. And we'll, well I, you know, Maybe I'll want to do it for more at that point. Eh, I'd rather prop, really, because I only bulk once a year and it's only this time of year. I, I want to try a little bit more experimentation. Uh, I want to try some other workout programs just because, one, be real with y'all, the, the, the dread, the anxiety, the frankly nausea before those 20 rep squat sets is really, un it's, it's not fun. It, 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 it puts a damper on the rest of the workout. I love doing the 20 rep sets in the sense that I know that's making me stronger but I hate the way I feel like the entire morning. Like this, ever since I woke up, I've been feeling nauseous. Like, and now I feel fine. Uh, except for that I know <laughs> in a few more days, I'm gonna be back under here trying the same fucking thing. I'm gonna feel like shit. But, so, you know, you gotta work with that. Um, so, in, in general, what I'm gonna try and do on Tuesdays is gonna be, I'm gonna hit all the muscle super squats due to super squats being very focused on compound workouts, right? Squats, bench press, behind the neck shoulder press, Romanians, uh, or, or single leg deadlift, depending on how you
and the like at rows. These are all great exercises, but it's a lot of central nervous system taxation, a lot of heavy breathing, and it doesn't really work well with your auxiliary. So, um, you know, curls, right? I'm at super squats. You're gonna, if you do it three times a week, you're gonna do six sets of curls a week. And you're gonna do, you know, you're gonna have rows, right? Six sets of rows a week. That's not a ton. That is very low volume. And I've really, I'm very proud of where my back has come. Uh, my, I think my rows are a lot stronger than where they used to be. Uh, you know, yeah, it doesn't look like I'm doing as much weight as I was when I was doing rows uh, back in February of this year on the bulk, but my form is a lot better. And I know it's a lot better. I know my back is stronger because I spent probably more than any other part of my body, I spent a lot more time working on my lats during the cut cycle this year. And it's, it showed off. I have a much better back. Now my back is still probably my weak link, but at least I can see it uh, outside of my chest now. So I'm gonna try, I think, I'm gonna try and get some volume in. It's probably gonna be a lot of hypertrophy. It's probably not gonna be a ton of uh, high weight stuff. Uh, experimentation in fitness. Lifting 50 pounds to the square root of negative I sets. Beautiful. Um, <laughs> that's pretty funny. But uh, as if, if you guys like math jokes, that's a good one. So I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm, I'm kind of piecing it out in my head. Definitely gonna hit at least two or three sets of dips. Uh, I, I don't feel like I'm hitting triceps enough. And frankly, triceps are my weak point on bench. If you guys are noticing, right, when I was benching, getting it up to about, Going this way for a moment, right? Your bench, you go, you touch your chest with the bar, you come back up. Getting to about here, very easy for me. Getting from here to lock, that's where I struggle and all too often where I fail. The reason for that is that my triceps are not uh, able to lift the same weight that my chest is. So if I want to continue getting stronger in my chest, I need to make my triceps strong enough to withstand the same amount of benching. So what, what does that mean? Well, it means I need to do more dips. It means I need to do more triceps extensions. It means I need to work those tricep muscles to the point where they're able to you know, compensate. So I'm gonna probably throw in at least four to five sets of triceps, uh, maybe even more on this Tuesday workout. Definitely gonna throw in uh, some pull downs or some pull ups, uh, probably a little bit of each, probably a couple wide grip pull ups, um, might throw some chins in, definitely gonna throw in some preacher curls with the easy bar because I don't have that set up here. Uh, probably some cable flies, uh, cable crossovers, stuff that really a lot of the auxiliary stuff that's good, but it's not, you know, the compound workouts everybody focuses on. I'm doing that in super squats, so that, that Tuesday workouts where I can kind of fill in the holes. Um, you know, a lot of people say, oh, that's not necessary, you just need to work on the compounds. That's as may be, uh, but I would like to see progress on those smaller, perhaps, you know, th those muscles that are worked as auxiliaries in the compounds, but that maybe are holding me up. Triceps is the biggest culprit, but I'd like to continue working on biceps. I think my biceps could get bigger. Uh, same with my lats, delts. Just, you know, throw in maybe some front raises, maybe some side raises, uh, and then, Probably leg curls, leg extensions, maybe deadlifts, probably not. Um, if they're deadlifts, they're gonna be something like Jefferson deadlifts at a much lighter weight to really work on motion, range of motion and stuff like that. Um, I do want to try and get my deadlift up. PR is 440, I would be thrilled if I could get 500 by March 1st. Don't think that'll happen, but maybe 475. Uh, the point there is going to be more about, yo, uh, you know, do you want to see, do you want to see that big number go up? I mean, that's, that's really what it is. It's a, van it's a vanity thing, I'll admit it, but it'd be really nice to see, it'd be really nice to see 500 pounds go up on a, on a deadlift. Uh, I, I, I don't know if we'll hit that or not. Um, I, I'm still trying to figure out what workout plan I want to do after super squats. Uh, I'm going to reevaluate sort of where I'm at in late December and, and make that make up my mind. I think the way I want to do this is 
probably go from super squats to something almost, almost more of like a power lifter style program. Might be 5-3-1, might be something else where really working on trying to hit my maxes, uh, really working on that high level weight stuff, perhaps a little bit continued low volume, uh, or maybe you know you have a, a power day and a volume day, something like that. I don't really know yet. Still, I'm still kind of working out the kinks on what I want to achieve. Uh, and if you're if you're knowledgeable about programming and about you know trying to push your numbers right, so my bench squat deadlift, you combine them all is around. Let me do the math on this real quick. It's somewhere over 1,100 pounds. Um, it's probably not quite 1,200, but it's close. Uh, let's see, 440 for my, so my PR is, is closer to 1,200, but I know I can't bench 355 right now. I failed on 330, 335 not that long ago, like a week ago. I'm guessing 330, 325 is somewhere around my max bench right now. Uh, Squats probably around 390, 395. Uh, you know, PR is 405. So, so three. Let's just say, let's be conservative. Say 390 plus 325. That's going to be 715. And then deadlift is 440. Let's just say you know I take it easy or I have a bad day or whatever. Uh, you, you know, instead of getting 440, I just get 405. Okay, boom. There you go. It's 1120. It's 1120 pounds, and that's being very conservative. So. 1150 is probably pretty accurate if I if I were to be honest, you know, I doubt I try like a max BSD and have bad days on all three. I probably have a bad day on one and then do better on two. Uh, so, have you considered obtaining a physical or digital whiteboard to show the math when you are in discussion discussion of fitness or finance? You know, I do have a whiteboard inside. Do you think that would help? You know, I've always got that uh, ideas and feedback channel in my Discord, but nobody ever puts anything in there. Uh, and so I, I, never, I never think to do things like that. That's a really great idea. Um, fuck, that's, that's fucking brilliant. See, FM, I need, the, I need suggestions like this in the Discord. And the reason I'm saying this, I'm harping on this, is because I cannot, when I end a stream, I cannot go back and review chat. Uh, I can see like the last 10 minutes of chat and I can't like, even if I go to the VOD, it's not going to show it. So please, 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 please put that idea in the ideas and feedback channel in Discord so I remember to do it. Just for my own edification, I'm writing it down in here because that's fucking, that's a really good idea. whiteboard in gym. Sometimes I think it would help the visual learners. Oh, absolutely. No, I, I can tell you immediately. That's a, that's a really good idea. I never thought of it. It seems so obvious now. Why, why did I not think of that earlier? Thank you. I uh, appreciate that a lot, actually. That's, a, that's, that's genius. <clears throat> so basically, uh, workout wise, it's going to be super squats for, uh, next week, the week after, probably the week after. I'm probably not going to go much more than four weeks. We'll see how I'm feeling. That's going to be not quite Christmas time, maybe like December 21st, something like that. Um, maybe I will do it over, maybe I will do it through Christmas because I'm going to be Christmas time, uh, I'm not going anywhere this year. That's a first. Most of the time, I'm usually traveling for Christmas or family's traveling to me. Uh, this year, instead, took my mom to Puerto Rico for her birthday because it was a lot cheaper to do that for her birthday than for Thanksgiving or for Christmas. Uh, we decided to punt Christmas this year, so we're all staying home, which is great, but it means I'm going to hunker down and be here and be kind of on my own. So I'm going to be I'm gonna be hitting the weights really hard. My, my goal is to basically sleep, you know, 12, 13 hours a day, lift, and not really do a whole lot else. Um, I may, hell, I may take CS that a day at some point. I just don't have, I have some things I need to get done. Um, could clean up the garage a little bit. I need to fix my tire on my bike because I miss cycling and cycling's fun. Um, I'd love to go for a hike too today. I might, I might do that, a good walk. You know, nothing crazy, but like a couple of miles would be a good idea. I've worked the lactic acid a bit. Um, 
But the fact, right, the fact that I'm saying, ah, you know, a couple mile hike doesn't sound so bad this soon after lifting, um, you know, all that weight on squats tells me everything I need to know about the fact that I did not push myself as hard as I should have today. But that's what you learn. You know, that's, that's how it goes. Uh, that I, I failed upstairs. I did not fail downstairs. Let's see who we got here. We got Celty, Bam 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 Bam, Holder, and Kernak. We'll probably, probably raid Celty. Do we have any other questions? I like can talk about financial independence. Uh, that's been going really well. Stock market's been up a lot. So I'm back over the, actually for the first time, the 80% mark to being financially independent. Now, I should mention, for those of you who are new here, uh, that financial independence does not necessarily mean I will retire. It simply means I can retire. Uh, I like my job, actually, so I don't need to, but I really like not being fucked with and uh, being able to tell management, yo, just so you're aware, I can retire anytime I feel like uh, because I've saved enough, you know, I've saved enough money to do so is a really powerful feeling. So it's, it's very nice to have that uh, knowing. Uh, the stream's kind of reaching its end, Kansas, unless you've got questions for me, but uh, I'm all ears if you do. Oh, stream did not go great. Congrats on reaching 80%. Thank you. Uh, I think at this point, now it's really going to be, you know, a lot of my money, right? The vast majority of my net worth is invested in stocks. And uh, as a result, that's, it's gonna have some volatility. So, you know, how do I cope with that? Well, again, just because, right, it's a theoretical number, first off, in a lot of ways. Is it likely, right, the idea behind that financial independence number is what number, what, what number invested when withdrawing at a safe withdrawal rate would give me enough money where I don't need to work another day of my life? This is needs, right? This is survival. This is not living a very fancy lifestyle. But, well, I mean, in your defense, you're like five hours behind us, so that's, that's understandable. You're, the time difference explains a lot. It's okay, you don't have to show up here when I start. Um, I just realized the coincidence or irony of bull investing in stocks. It's why, part of why I chose bull muscle as my name, actually, uh, because I am, I'm very much a terminal optimist and I believe very strongly in investing, which makes me a bull. There you go. Um, yes, I am very bullish. That is, that is correct. <sighs> but as far as, uh, as far as the financial independence point, right? The idea here is not that I would, you know, live a life of luxury on this number, on this financial independence number. If you guys are curious what the numbers are, just ask and I'll talk about it. But the idea is that this is enough money to where I can survive indefinitely without ever having to work another job. The idea that I would do that though, I would go the rest of my life without ever making another cent. I mean, shit, even, I don't try. You, you guys notice how few ads there are on this channel compared to other Twitch channels. The reason is because I'm not doing this for money. I'm doing this because it's fun. Uh, and I'm doing this because I like teaching people. If I wanted to try and monetize this already, you know, that would already be bringing in a small amount of income that drastically changes how much uh, I need to withdraw or how much I need to spend. In other words, realistically, if I were to do that, I could probably be financially considered financially independent today. But I like building a cushion too, because the other thing too is, you know, if I build a cushion and I end up having uh, build, you know, go with the most conservative analysis. What it means is, in all likelihood, my money will continue to grow over time, decade over decade. Uh, and when that happens, right, all that excess, well, what can I do with that money? I can do good with that money. I can do charity with that money. I can run for public office with that money. It, it, it gives me a lot of freedom. And that's what it's all about. It's about building freedom. When you discuss investing, you can invite us to the stockyard. That's great. I love that line. Um, Shit, I may have to change my name, or I may have to change the channel, uh, the finances channel to say the stockyard. I really like that. One more moment, I gotta pee again. Huge bowl, tiny bladder.
much better. So yeah, you know, it's, oh my God. Okay, yeah, my quads are definitely hurting, so that's a good sign. Um, so as far as the financial independence thing is concerned, right, I do like my job and I like where I live and I like my house. And there, just because I can be financially independent, just because I can retire, again, does not mean I will retire. It just means I have the ability to. It means, I again, I can tell management, hey, just so you know, I've saved up enough money to where I no longer need to work at this job. And they, you know, I, I can retire anytime I want. What that means is the next time management says, hey, you're gonna work Saturdays, they're gonna know, oh wait, we can't fuck with this guy. We can't tell this guy to work Saturdays. We can ask very nicely and if they were to do that, I'd say, okay, why do you want me to work Saturdays? Is it truly crucial to the project? And will there be any extra compensation or rewards for that? And then they can say yes, or they can say no. And to be fair, at my current line of work, if I were to work Saturdays, I would get that, I would get comp time for that, or I would get extra money in my paycheck. Extra money doesn't really motivate me here, uh, frankly, because my salary is good enough and well, I have nothing to spend it on. <laughs> I mean, I can spend it on improving my gym, but you know, I, I say that, but what, what would I really add that I don't already have? I could make, I could get a better rack, like a power rack, a better pull-up bar setup. That would be pretty nice. The trouble is I don't really have the space for it um, as long as my car must, as long as my garage must remain a two-car garage. So the only way I would ever really start upgrading the shit out of this gym is if A, I were staying here long term, which is up in air, and B, if my roommates moved out. Uh, or if my roommate gave up her spot in the garage, which I'm not going to make her do because she's got a vault just like I do and needs to charge it. So that's, that's kind of how that goes. Um, although maybe I could work out some sort of deal. I say that. There, there's probably going to be a way where I could, if I were to work on a charging cable, I need to, I need to think about that. There's got to be some way where I could run the charging cable out to her car and charge her car while it isn't in here. The trouble is it's, yeah, I got to think about that one. It'd be really, re no, no, I couldn't do that because her car was out there and I need to get out with my car, I have no way to do that. We'd have to play, we'd have to play Tetris with cars and that's, that's just not fun. Yeah, that, that's sort of the trouble. There's, there's, it doesn't really make sense. The only, the only way I could really expand this garage gym is if this became a one car garage and it's not right now, it's a two car garage. I have to, and it fits, everything fits in here, but it's very tight and there's very little space to expand. Of course, this is again, assuming I stay, run the charging cable from the neighbor's house to her car. Uh, that would be a very long cable and I like my neighbors, so no. <laughs> no, nah, this is, I, I, live in a, I live in a small southern town, you don't do that shit. You do that shit, that's a good way to get ostracized by everybody else. Plus, just like I am, my neighbors are armed. Uh, unrelated, but man, last week I bought some mispriced 45 pound bumper plates for $40 each on Amazon, I bought six of them. Deal was mispriced for a day or so, and I stumbled upon it randomly. A C day, lucky you. Good for you, bro. I'm jealous. I would love that kind of. I mean, frankly, I don't have a use for more bumper plates right now. Uh, I think the max I can put on a bar here is like 470. I don't have a reason to go any heavier than that right now. Maybe if I can again, try that super heavy deadlift. But if I want to do super heavy deadlifts like that, I'll probably just do it at the site gym. Um, Yeah, I mean, I get booty of a really heavy deadlift, but at the same time, I don't really care about that. I don't lie to you guys. It's just not something I do. You guys see me succeed and you guys see me fail. Uh, and if, you know, if, if you've been around on this channel and then you'd think I'd lie about what my deadlift was, uh, I mean, that, I mean, that, I, I would have some serious questions. Be like, really? How long have you been here? That's just not my style. So. Anyway, 
So that's about it. Do we have any final questions? Otherwise, I'm gonna look to raid someone. I'll probably be live hanging out in the lounge on my channel later today. Uh, later, actually, I'll probably need to, might run up to town, get myself some more rocks from Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, probably pick up food, probably handle the recyclables. There's one other thing I need to do, I'm forgetting what it is right now, but yeah, uh, if you guys have any suggestions as to what I should do, you know, just, uh, yeah, just let me know. All right, we've got Celci, Holder Hack, Infinity. it's not bad. Infinity's not lifting today, so probably won't do him. We'll probably rate Celci, I like Celci. Hell, good to see you. No questions, but I hope you have a swell day. Um, it's been a good, it's been a, a good morning, but a bad lift. Um, but you can learn a lot from a weekday or a bad day where you failed in the gym. And I certainly have today. Hmm. I got a little drainage post-nasal drip going on too, so that means I need to probably rest and recover a little bit more. And that's what it is. You know, some, some days you're just not gonna have your best stuff. Uh, to use a baseball analogy, right? You, you know, your fastball is not hitting today. Your squat, you know, in here, your squat's not hitting today. Your, your bench isn't hitting today. As long as it doesn't become a recurring theme, you know, having one failure isn't a huge deal. And to be fair, this is the first time I've tried it beltless with a platform and with the three second count instead of, you know, one second counts for the first 10 reps and then a lot more heavy breathing at the end. Hell says USF is gonna be nuts this week. Uh, that it is. You've got the game. You've got well. You've got this rivalry week in college football. So there's going to be all sorts of stuff there. Uh, that's not even counting whatever nonsense happens in the NFL, which is going to be pretty, you know, pretty much standard for the course. Uh, you know, you've got hockey season starting up. Nobody cares about basketball, but you know it's there. Um, even college basketball, which is a lot better. Nobody's interested in this part of the early season. And I've been doing pretty well, which makes me happy. But. There's no way we beat LSU today. I mean, if we did, it would be unbelievably funny because we'd, we'd be doing it with a second string head coach and a third string quarterback, but the upcoming week is decision week. You're talking about for the playoffs? Yeah. <sighs> All right, well, I think it's about time to uh, move over to Celsius channel. So we are going to do a little raid ski. God, my legs are killing me though, fuck. Actually, I should do a quick stretch. I'm gonna do a quick toe touch. Oh. Oh. That'll do. All right, yeah, I'm pretty sore. We're gonna raid Celsi. Raid message is gonna be bull rush, as always. And let me just <laughs> Holy shit, that hurts. Uh, all right, raid message. Bull rush. At least you don't have to be in for work for 10 hours. Uh, I mean, I do work 10 hour shifts, but no, I'm not working until Monday. So we're going to raid Seltzy. Uh, Seltzy's pretty awesome. He does a lot more cardio hit style stuff. He's got way better endurance than I do, and I really love his content. So. Definitely give him a follow if you, you know, raid and you like what he does. Uh, but that is it for me today. I will be live probably on the lounge in my Discord later, just chilling, maybe playing some RuneScape, something like that. Uh, as always, y'all, make good decisions. Those good decisions form your habits. Those habits form your values. Those values form an ethos. They can be the guide star through the rough waters of life. Much love, y'all. Come in for the hug. Oh, my God, this hurts so bad. <laughs> All right, see you in the raid, Ski. All right, YouTube, that's it. Well, not, my best, uh, not my best effort today. I got some shit I need to fix. Until next time, cheers. <laughs>